Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to Vlogmas day number six. I hope you guys enjoyed the heli skiing video yesterday. So much fun doing that. Um, today I want to do a, a fairly serious topic. Um, it's not going to be as much vlog style, it's going to be more instructional style. And it's on a topic that a lot of people are talking about. And it has to do with um, Robinsons, not Robinsons in particular, but Robinsons are a little more prone to this. Um, but any two-bladed helicopter that can uh, mass bump or are susceptible to low G pushovers. And um, so we want to talk about safely flying a Robinson helicopter in turbulence. And I'll, I'll just blanket statement that any two bladed helicopter in turbulence. Okay. So we've got some really, really good key tips that we found uh, ourselves flying in the industry in the last uh, 15 years or so. And, and just stuff that we found so useful. So I just wanted to pass some of that along to you guys. So first of all, if you're going to go flying and you know that there's turbulence up in the mountains, um, and I'm, I'm not going to say a little bit of turbulence, but significant turbulence, um, avoid the flight. So that's that's step number one. If you know that it's going to be really rough, a lot of mechanical turbulence and stuff like that, just avoid the flight altogether. Reschedule it. It's probably not worth going for. So I'd say that's, uh, that's option number one. Um, the second thing would be, if you're already out flying, and you find yourself in a turbulent area, probably the second thing to do is immediately start slowing the aircraft down. So you're usually cruising along at about 100 knots or so, and so if you can start slowing that aircraft down, uh, it's recommended to be between 60 and 70 knots. That would be sort of the most ideal. So slowing the aircraft down is definitely a second thing. Um, if you have an option, loading up the aircraft with more people is always better. So if you're out there solo by yourself, uh, that's a really bad place to be in turbulence, in the mountains, um, and solo. So if you can load the helicopter up with four people, uh, that really helps. Weight definitely helps. Okay. Now, those things aside, you find yourself out there, maybe the helicopter is lightly loaded, um, you're in the mountains, you're in turbulence. If you can land, if there's a safe place to land, and I know that I've personally been in situations where there just simply wasn't a safe place to land, um, then, then you have to continue. But if there is a safe place to land, get on the ground, just wait it out, or uh, potentially try and find a different spot. There's different ways to get out of some turbulence. You know, if you fly in the middle of the valley as a close to, opposed to closer to the mountains, um, that can really be helpful as well. Climbing sometimes up, if you can get above the terrain, because you get the mechanical turbulence in the mountains, so if you can get well above that terrain, that can help as well. So go maybe a, a 3,000 feet or higher above the, the mountains. Sometimes that can definitely be very useful as well. So those are all sort of things to help you out. But um, I just had this not that long ago. Um, it wasn't supposed to be a windy day. I, uh, I was flying a longer distance. I got into an area in the mountains and it was, I would say, significantly turbulent um, to the point where I was uncomfortable. So there's, um, there's some real key things that I did to be able to help me stay safe, okay? So I wanna start talking about those right now. We've got Simon here and uh, he's gonna be our test pilot. So um, he is flying normally right now. So just a conventional flying style. One thing I would suggest right off the bat is, um, or your heels, so let's see if we can show his heels there. Get your heels spread apart a little bit, okay? You guys all understand the, um, the principle of a tripod, okay? So if you have three legs on a tripod, and the further you can spread those legs apart on the tripod, the more stable it's gonna be, right? Well, it's the same thing with your legs. So he's got his heels spread apart right now, so he's got created a wider surface. Now what he's gonna do is he's gonna tuck his hand down in between his knees and he's gonna tuck his knees nice and tightly together, okay? So right now the knees are nice and tight and they're pinching that cyclic together, okay? And um, the last thing he can do here is start to put some friction on. So you wanna make sure that you uh, get the frictions on nice and snug. You don't wanna go to a point where they're really, really tight, but uh, you wanna go to a point where they're snug, okay? Um, the number one thing people do wrong when they're flying in turbulence is over control the cyclic, okay? So Robinson states that, and, and I don't know if I fully 100% agree th with this, but th they state that full cyclic travel is allows nine degree bank on the rotor system, okay? Full cyclic travel. Now, they, they, they claim that it takes 11% or 11 degree travel of the rotor system to be able to mass bump mass bump to a point where it's significant enough that you're gonna the mass bump the, the rotor head off or hit your tail boom, okay? So theoretically, if you're gently moving that cyclic even all the way to its maximum stop points, you shouldn't be able to mass bump to a point where it's um, really dangerous. So taking off the rotor the rotor head or chopping your tail boom off. So that's, that's theoretical. So 
if you can hold that cyclic really steady, so that's all the, the key points that I was giving you right there. If you can hold that cyclic really steady, um, then you should be able to avoid the over controlling of the cyclic, okay? So that's the really big thing. Put the friction on, get your arm nice and stable there, and try and avoid the over controlling of the cyclic. In turbulence, the helicopter is going to be buffeted up and down. You're going to get low G situations, high G situations. You're going to get thrown sideways. All of those things happen, okay? And, and there's nothing we can do about that, but what we can do is we can make sure that we're not over controlling that cyclic. And for me personally, I'm not really controlling it at all. If the, if the helicopter wants to go up, I let it go up. If it wants to start banking, I let it bank. Once that, that hit of turbulence is over, then I'll take a gentle correction and I'll level the helicopter back out, all right? But I'm taking my time on it. On every time that I'm correcting it, I'm making sure that I'm taking my time and I'm not over controlling. Those are the, can you think of anything else, Simon? Those are the really, really big key things. Um, so I'm just gonna show you one just more time slow. here. Yeah, so slowing down, that's the, that's the big thing. So Simon slowed it down here to 60 knots. We could even go a little slower. We could probably go to maybe 50 knots or something like that. And he's got his arm there um, just nice and tight into his legs. And he's really not over controlling the aircraft in the slightest bit. Now we're on a day today where it's, uh, it's light winds. We made sure that there wasn't a lot of winds in the mountains or anything. So quite stable that way. Uh, but I hope these tips help you guys. I hope they make sense. Um, if they do, um, share this with somebody who finds this interesting because I know that there's so many people out there that are talking about this topic. Um, I know that there's been, it's really sad, but there's been so many fatal accidents and some of you guys um, might be directly affected by that or know people that are um, because of this uh, situation. And it, you know, every time I read an article and I, I hear about another Robinson fatal crash, whether it's an R-22 or an R-44 or an R-66, um, it's, it's just really sad to me because these are high time pilots, 10, 15,000 hours experience, and they're still getting these mass bumping situations. And, and I have to ask myself why. And, and just as a disclaimer, I don't want to say that these tips are the, the way that you can fly in any turbulence you want and stay safe. That's really important to know. I'm not saying that um, just if you do these things, go for it, fly in any turbulence you want. No, definitely not. Always use the, the first checklist things that I said. If you can avoid flying in it altogether, do it. Um, if you can minimize the, the time that you're in there, do it. That's great. But um, all I'm saying is that these are some tips that if you follow them, I think uh, you should be safer while you're flying through that turbulence. You should be able to get home, hopefully learn from that experience, hopefully not have to do that again. So, um, anything I missed, Simon? No, nope, it's no? really good. It's good? Yeah. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody you know, and uh, until tomorrow, we'll talk to you guys later.